Of course, a lot of businesses are trying to figure out what could happen later on in the year. That's the big question. And perhaps no bigger than the companies right now weighing the decision to come out uh, in this environment as a publicly traded company. We, of course, saw uh, a bit of a closing of the IPO window, so to speak, earlier in the year when this pandemic first hit. But since then, uh, quite the change, uh, as we heard from the president of the New York Stock Exchange telling CNBC that the rest of the year looks strong for IPOs. So what does the data show us for what we could see? More on that, I want to bring in our next guest, Previn Wass, is U.S. IPO and software leader at Deloitte and Touche, and he joins us now. Uh, and Previn, I understand you just dug into this uh, with the help of PitchBook collaborating here. So what are you seeing in terms of how companies might be thinking about this decision to go public here with the overhang of a potential second wave maybe hanging uh, over their head? Yes, uh, Zach, you know, good to see you again. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, you know, what, what I can say is it's clear, right? The IPO window is open right now. There's been a lot of, uh, you know, successful exits over the last three or four weeks. Um, you know, I would say it's completely unexpected. Um, you know, what we're seeing is that, you know, the markets are, you know, stable again. Uh, companies are queuing up to get out or you know, lining up to get out. And, and, you know, I think this, this IPO window is currently open. I think it's open for the foreseeable future. Of course, the, the kind of the two things that, that people are really um, being cautious about is a potential second wave uh, uh, later on in the year and, and how they think about that. And of course, there's the election, right? The election in November and traditionally, you know, companies don't try to, they try to time their exits such that they're not a part of the volatility that comes with an election, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in November. Um, also, you know, historically, you think about August, right? August is a vacation year, uh, month, and you know, companies don't tend to do uh, IPOs during the month of August. Uh, however, when, when I look at the companies that we're talking to and, and people in, in the ecosystem, uh, you know, given that people are not traveling as much and taking vacations, I think August is inbounds as well. Yeah, I guess if you are one of these privately held companies weighing this decision right now, these last few weeks uh, would make you want to put your foot even harder on the gas here. When we look at some of these companies uh, like online uh, car resale platform, Vroom doubling in its first day. You've got Warner Music Group successfully coming out. Uh, a few other names to highlight there. But I mean, when we look at maybe how it might be a different decision for some smaller companies versus some larger ones, the trend has been uh, some of these companies that have stayed private for longer uh, now coming out, when you think about Uber and Lyft, those are some giant, giant IPOs. Uh, but what are you thinking about uh, the size of these companies that they have stayed private for longer? How might that impact what we see in the back half of 2020 as well? I mean, it's no secret, Zach, that if you go back 10 years ago, uh, you know, the moment you got to, you know, around 100 million in revenue, you went public. Uh, however, over the last 10 years, there's been a, the, the trend has changed where 100 million is no longer kind of magic marker. Um, you know, the, the, the ability to access capital and therefore stay private longer has, has ensured that companies going public now are much, much more mature businesses. They're no longer, you know, I got to 100 million. I, I don't know how to get to profitability. I, I don't quite understand my long term model, but yet I'm going public. That's not the case anymore. It's now companies are a lot more mature, a lot more revenue, either profitable, closer to profitability or being cash flow positive, those are the kind of companies that we're seeing that, that, that go public these days, if you look at the last couple of years. And, and I think going forward, I think you're gonna see the same thing. I, I do believe that when you look at the kind of the unit economics, you look at the you know, growth trends, you look at the amount of revenue, the companies that are going public in the current environment uh, are much larger companies, much more mature companies. I do expect that to continue. Yeah, you can look at uh, companies that have been profitable kind of last year uh, and the year before catching a little bit more of, I guess, excitement since there are so many now that are coming out that are not profitable, especially when you compare back. It's the highest amount since the tech bubble, so also important to keep in mind there. But when you look at uh, some of these companies that are profitable, Zoom turned into a darling yet again this year as people shift to work from home. But if you're historically comparing 2020, I know it's hard to predict uh, to the years that have come before, what are we shaping up for in terms of deal sizes and, and the amount of companies coming public now, especially if we are to believe that the back half of 2020 is going to be, uh, you know, accelerating here as more companies sense it's now or never to really get out? Yes, yeah, so I, I think there's, there's, 
you know, 2020 is clearly, you know, unusual and a dynamic time, right? It's really hard to predict what the back half of 2020 is going to look like with an election and the potential for, for, for a second wave, wave of COVID, right? That being said, I still do believe some very large companies uh, with some nice revenue are going to are going to look to get out without a doubt. Uh, and and going into next year, there there are a lot of companies that are going to going to wait for the election to be over and then try and get out in the in the first uh, first quarter, second quarter of next year. So absolutely, I think I don't just think of 2020. I think the fact that we 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 potentially you know again keeping the election in mind and, and putting COVID aside. I think that there's there's a you know uh, 2020 is impacted obviously by the election, but I think people are looking to 2021 uh, as being uh, uh, a good year as well. All right, there you go. We'll see how it all shakes out. Of course, there are a lot of uh, uncertainties out there, and uh, no doubt yeah. impacting the IPO space. But uh, Previn Was, appreciate it. US IPO and software leader at Deloitte and Touche. Thanks again for chatting. Absolutely, great, great, great to see you again, and, and thanks for having me on the show.